Hey guys, Gavin Syme, and I'm in the studio today, and I was thinking this week about light. Now, I think about light every week, but I've been working on some new workshops and lectures that I'm putting together, and realizing that in, in photography, there's two things that photographers seem to be fundamentally terrified of. The first one is profit, and the second one is light. And I'm going to focus on light today. Now, you may be shaking your head thinking, well, I'm not terrified of light, and that's great. But if you think about it, this is a problem because there's all these different types of light and there's all these different lighting conditions. And one way or the other, even though light is our paint, it's, it's the clay that we sculpt with. And yet at the same time, light is still what we kind of fear the most in working with our images, what we feel the most out of control with. And light is what we, what we should be the most in control of. So today we're going to go in and I'm going to look at a few images taken in different light but in the same place. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop into Lightroom and I'm going to look at an area that I've been going back to for years. And I finally got an image not too long ago that did it justice for this beautiful place here. And we, we go here, we park up here, we camp up here. It's kind of overlooking the entire Zion Valley down in Utah. And it basically took me three years of coming back to this spot to get the image that I wanted. And I, I never was satisfied with, with the light. See, there's three ways to get good light. And this applies to landscapes like this, to portraits, to anything. There's, there's three ways to get good light. One is to take it. It's to have it there and to expose correctly and to use your technique and your craft and your artistry and to take that light and showcase it as it is. The other is to make it. And sometimes that means putting reflectors up. Sometimes it means using strobes. You know, I do, I do portrait work and wall portraits, and I have no problem throwing in a strobe. Sometimes we have a situation where we're doing a portrait, and we're like, oh, the light's a bit flat, but he looks fine. And we kind of are being lazy, and then we throw in a strobe, and we make the light the way we want it. We sculpt it the way we want it, and it just sings. It's just beautiful. The other is... To wait for it. So we take it, we make it, or we wait for it. Wait for it means you come back. In in a situation like this, here's the first time I went there down in 2010. And I'm like, wow, this is so amazing. This is the most beautiful place. When I walked up to the edge of this view, it took my breath away. And ever since then, for years, I've been working to get the images that I've wanted of a panorama of this scene. Now, here is, is late afternoon light. In a landscape, it's pretty hard to make the light. I don't have a strobe that's going to light this area. So in the case of making a pictorial, usually I'm going to take the light and find something in the scene. And this is key, the difference between taking the light and waiting for the light. Sometimes you want to photograph a scene and there's something you can do with it in that light that is beautiful if you, if you think differently. Sometimes you have to change your perception. Sometimes you even have to change your subject if you're trying to convey something about a place or a thing with the light that you have there. But but listen, when I'm making a pictorial, usually what I'm doing is I am waiting for the light. In this case, it took me years of coming back here to get the light that I really wanted. You know, I'll go to national parks a lot and never have so many cameras done so little because people go out, they don't necessarily want to get up early, it's the middle of the day and they just run around snap, 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 snapping. And, and that's fine. That's great for vacation snapshots and photos, but I'll see people out there with $30,000 of camera equipment in the middle of the day in the harsh sunlight. The light is everything in our images, and we do not need to be afraid of the light. If we understand that light is the way it is, light is science, and we talk about this a lot in Exposed, in the Exposed workshop, and also in my, my Photographics workshop, we talk about how it relates to the art of photography. But the light is actually an absolute, and there's no reason, once we understand light, if you understand your zones and your tones and your values, and you think about light as, as your paint, instead of worrying about how the light's going to look to the camera and how it's going to look when it's finished and whether it's going to work, if you understand your light, you don't fear your light, you use the light, you control the light, and you control the resulting image. Okay, now here is also in 2010. Great, we had sunset. Now things are looking neat, right? I, I never released this image either because it simply did not do the place justice. Oh, it's beautiful. When you were standing there in the real world, in the real place, it was, it was wonderful. But it didn't have the majesty that this place deserved. And so 
here we are now. This is actually in 2013. The sky's no good. The sky is too plain. And I was trying to get a panorama of this. I was trying to do something spectacular with it. And it just wasn't right. And so another, another trip passed without the image I want to. Also in 2013, I thought, well, let's, let's go for the night view. And this was cool. This is like a 30-minute 30, 30 or so exposure, I think. We have the stars. We have the, the light on this. It's a neat image. I love long exposures. Still did not give me what I wanted, even though we had some neat clouds, and it's a neat place. It wasn't what I was trying to convey from this. So image after image after image. Some areas are harder than others. The, the more grand and vast the area the more meticulous I am sometimes because there's so much area being covered by that light. To get the light I want, to get the sky I want, everything has to come together. Everything has to fall into place. What I'm getting at here today is not that in every instance you're going to wait years for the light. If I'm out doing a portrait, I need the light right now. So I'll either find a place where the light is right and take the light, or I'll get a strobe or a reflector or and make the light. I won't usually wait for the light. But I will in a sense because I'll schedule a portrait to be at sunset. I'll schedule it in an area where I know the light's good. I'm always working around light, but I'm also controlling light. And you can do both. Months later in 2013, coming back six, 700 miles from home to this same spot. Now, how high our standards are depends on what we're trying to accomplish with that. But I believe in always raising the bar in our images. And I've been waiting for years for this one to get it just right because I know how spectacular it will be when I get it just right. And here's another one, also late in 2013. You know, sometimes these were done one day and another day, and I would, I would stay in this area for a few days hoping to get what I wanted to do it justice. And didn't always succeed. It was beautiful but it wasn't enough. So look at all this changing light. Here's these different conditions. Here's the bottom line, is I can take all these images and I could do post-processing and I can burn and dodge. And don't get me wrong, I love the digital tools. I make digital tools. I love being able to control our post-production, but you cannot fake great light. It just doesn't work that way. And so getting the light right in camera, getting the exposure right in camera, either taking it, making it, or waiting for it, makes all the difference. You can take mediocre light like this where it's pretty and I can burn and dodge it to death and do crazy effects. But oftentimes when you make an image and you work it and work it and work it and you're like, oh there, now it's pretty, but it doesn't really get the feedback you want. It doesn't really wow you. And you know kind of deep inside that you've overworked it. You know deep inside that it's not what you really wanted and you're not satisfied with it. I finally learned that when that happens, I don't even release the image. I don't, I don't print it. I don't use it. I wait till I can get it right. And that's what I did with this one. I finally kept coming back and coming back and coming back until finally, late in the year, I, I got this. And it was only there for a few minutes. This light coming through. And wait till you see the finished version. And I'm not going to show it here because it really needs to be released in a context where you can zoom it in. And I'm still working on the final details. But the finished version is... is about 20 different images from this scene that I've stitched together and been working on and bringing out the highlights and the shadows and, and still doing moderate post-production on. But this is the beauty of this. I didn't, I didn't have to boost this way up. I didn't have to work this to death to get it to look like this. Now, I've done a little bit on the contrast and things like that, but the light here straight out of camera is right here. Let me just reset this. We're looking at a raw file. And here is straight out of camera. So yeah, I had to control some of my contrast and burn and dodge. We're looking over a long distance, so we got some haze from the sun coming across. But the light was glorious. The light was so red and so brilliant on these Utah red rocks that I, I keep finding myself dialing it back because I'm like, people aren't going to believe it. They're not going to believe the light was this red, and it was so rich. And there's texture. There's just a little bit of of detail down in the shadows as we sweep across this panorama. And there's clouds as you go across. There's over to the right here, there was rain falling in the distance. And I don't have all the images right up here right now. But think about this for a minute. I'm going to go back and I want to show you all these together. And what I'm getting at here is that 
our medium is the light. And we're trying to take the light and work with the light and give the image that we want. And here's six variations of this same scene finally resulting in the one that I was waiting for. Do you think it was worth it in this case to wait for the light rather than just taking the light that I had and saying that's good enough? I waited for it until I got the light that I was looking for, the visualization that I wanted in my mind. I knew in my mind's eye, like Ansel Adam taught us to visualize and to think about what we're trying to produce. And there's many times I make images where I can just wait for that evening. I can, I can expose in the right way. If you control your light, if you're not afraid of your light, and you take command of it, oftentimes you can get the image you want right then and there. But you have to understand your light and know how to work with it to do that. I rarely get an image in midday sun of a pictorial. Now, I might be able to make a nice portrait under a tree somewhere with a strobe filling it in. You know, it doesn't mean I can't ever work in those conditions, although, to be honest, most of my portraits are done at sunset, too. You can't fake it. Beautiful light is like nothing else in the world, and I don't care if you're standing up on this plateau and you're trying to do a portrait or you're trying to do a landscape. If you have the right light or you make the right light or you wait for the right light, it's going to make all the difference in the world. So really think about your light. That's the bottom line here. Stop being afraid of your light. Do what you want with the light. Understand what you're doing with the paint. And utilize it in the ways that you have available to you. Determine what you want to do. Plan your image. Visualize your image and carry it through. In this case, because it was a scene that I couldn't implicitly control the light with, I waited three years to get the image of this scene I wanted. So at the end, I still controlled the light. I didn't take the image until the light did what I wanted it to because I knew that eventually it would. And sometimes we control the light by putting a strobe or a, or a bulb on it. And sometimes we control it by just waiting a few minutes or changing the angle or doing something. But we can always control the light if we understand it. As independent as light is, we can use that to our advantage and make our images sing and not go out willy-nilly and cross our fingers and just hope the image works. We can know what we're doing. We can understand the science of light and work with it because it's reliable. Light is something that you can count on. So don't let your light control you. Control your light and what you do with it and how you visualize it and make the image that you want to make with it. And it all starts with knowledge. It starts with understanding the fundamentals of light and exposure and the artistry of image making so that you can truly visualize an image and carry it through all the way to that print hanging on the wall. All right, take care, guys. That's all for today.